<laughs> hey guys, welcome back. Now, I don't know if you've heard, but there's this tiny video game called Cyberpunk 2077 out there. Maybe it popped up on your radar. <laughs> It takes place in the year of 2077, and of course there's all kinds of crazy sci-fi technology and fashion, and the designs are just pure cosplay bait. Now the holy grail of cyberpunk cosplay to me are the mantis blades. They're just so iconic and cool to look at and very recognizable, but they're also by definition impossible to build in real life because they intersect with your arm and whatnot, but that won't stop me from trying. The Arasaka Mantis Blades are a cybernetic body modification that deploy from the user's forearms and resemble the praying mantis. They are designed to be covert and effective, but when they are used, they are flashy and definitely make a statement. The actual anatomy and engineering is quite complex, and you might notice a slight problem with me trying to recreate this in real life. Luckily for me, there are a few different versions of Mantis Blades, and there is one that seems to be quite more buildable than the rest. Meet Sandayu Oda. Oda is a character in game with these sick glowing mantis blades and they're exactly what I want to build. Making glowing things, well that's kind of my thing. And you see how it's not really clear where the blades are protruding from? Well that means that I can come up with anything and it will technically be not breaking the lore. The whole idea is that they should look like a part of my body, so precision is key. I 3D scanned my forearm for dimensional reference and prepared it for use. Well, the model I mean, not the arm. <laughs> I did some digging and I looked up the portfolios of the people who made the art for the game and Arasaka's style struck me as very militaristic and utilitarian uh, with very deliberate shapes and few details. Uh, the cables that are exposed are few and almost begrudgingly so. You can imagine like an Arasaka engineer somewhere in the year 2077 going, I made this beautiful design and you're making me stick wires out of it. Yeah, like what a waste. <laughs> I drew the most inspiration from these Arasaka cyber arms. You can see I tried to not drift too far from the established design language. The blade holders were easier as there are way more references out there. All this version is simpler and blockier which will help hide the wires. Getting the cuffs to sit right was the most time consuming part of the project because I needed to 3D print so many prototypes. But after burning a few weeks worth of filament and electricity I eventually nailed it. The two halves must snap together and be tight enough not to come apart, but still fit my arm comfortably, so it was quite a balancing act. One important design detail that I want to highlight are these little holes here. They're quite ingenious, if I do say so myself. This plastic here is nice and strong and plenty springy to clamp around my arm just like that, but eventually through body heat and wear and tear it will fatigue, and I need to anticipate that. I was thinking about some sort of uh, shoelace corset wraparound solution or some sort of latching mechanism to interlock the shell halves together, uh, but both of those sounded a bit too bulky for me. So I came up with these. So you see, pieces are coming together here fine, but eventually this part here will just bend out of shape. When the time comes, I will be able to screw in some bolts into these holes here and make these sturdy latches. You see how the pieces are interlocked now? Yeah, these are not coming apart. Otherwise, finishing the prints went quite well. Dry sanding, followed by wet sanding, followed by priming and painting. Usually I paint the parts as the last step in case I need to make some design changes, but I felt quite confident that I didn't overlook anything. For the main surfaces, I went with a glossy black base and dusted on some metallics for this stealthy tactical look. Some of the branding elements are 3D printed, but for some I make stencils to use with an airbrush. It seems that there are logos on the inside of the struts, so I'm adding those too. Turned out pretty clean. Um, now to top it off with some clear coat and move on to electronics. Um. Each Mantis blade has two motors in them, uh, one on the wrist point and one at the elbow point. The wires for everything pop out through the wire management holes at the front of the shell, which will be hidden by the wrist servo motors. Visible wires just look so messy, so I tried my best to hide them. That's why I cut the holes in the servo motors, so the wires would come from beneath and not from the front. I'm daisy chaining the power and ground wires from first servo to the next, but the signal wires are independent. Simply put, two independent servos will let me adjust the animation and software. If I had made a hardware-linked mechanism, such adjustments would not be possible. Um, I hope this example makes sense. Of course, this means that twice the motors, twice as expensive. Anyways, here you see me slide the cable for the elbow servo through the wire management path and how all the cables are hidden beneath the wrist servo. A little bit more of the same on the other end and I begin testing how this whole thing will be controlled. 
I patch up all the wires to an Arduino Nano and upload an experimental version of the software. I still hadn't refined the putting on procedure, but the test was a success. The software still needed some polishing as the motion was a bit jerky, but other than that, it was great. I control the motors by using a pressure sensor. This way I can tense the Mantis blade almost like a muscle, um, kind of like my early Doomfist gauntlet. It kind of gives you a phantom limb syndrome in a way, it's very intuitive and fun. <laughs> to power everything, I'm going to be using a USB C PD power bank and I'm going to set it to 12 volts. Um, that is fine for the LEDs, but the motors require anywhere from 6 to 8 volts, so I need to add a voltage regulator to not burn them. <laughs> Soldering everything together went okay. Um, I just also changed the way the heatsink was mounted so it would not take up as much space. Then the dreaded, I didn't change anything and nothing works anymore happened. Everything was connected like before, but motors would either spin by themselves or not move at all. Um, the computer would see the Arduino on USB, but only every other time it was replugged, it was really weird. I just kept swapping the components one by one until it started working again in the Ship of Theseus style. It was just such a bother to deal with, and just so you know, everyone has these problems, they just don't show it. Now to turn Mantis blades on or off, I designed a couple of belt-mounted buttons. These should be easier to reach than digging somewhere in a pocket in case of emergency. The buttons glow when turned on, and the rest of the electronics fit in this matchbox-sized container. The defining feature of Audas's blades is this lightsaber-like glow. To achieve something like it, I will be using powerful LEDs and edge lighting the blades. I bought a bunch of different plexiglass sheets with various colors and translucency, and I think I found the right combination of LEDs and plexi that should give me the right color and brightness. To make the blades perfectly symmetric and with the mounting points at the right spots, I will rely on my laser cutter to etch out an outline, and since it is too weak to cut plexi, I will need to give it something else to burn off, like black paint. The laser burnt off the paint in the shape of the blades and left a crisp line for me to follow with a jigsaw and a drill. To reduce the weight and to help smooth out the light, I add a bit of a taper to the blade by sanding. Plexiglass is quite dense and I need to save weight if I want them to move fast. I clean off the LEDs and prepare to glue them. The only thing that sticks to the silicone color correcting film of the LEDs is other silicone, so I'm using some translucent bathroom silicone. I run my fingers along it to form a smooth transition between the parts and let it sit for a day or two. The silicone is not meant to be used as glue, so I didn't want to move it until I knew it's cured through. The further I go with this project, the harder it is not to be excited. Um, as you see, the blades turned out really clean and the color is spot on and I'm really happy with them. I solder on some connectors for the blade LEDs so I could swap the blades with zero effort. As soon as I was done with the electronics, I realized that my whole approach was overly complicated. <laughs> the extra bulk of having two separate independent systems was a bit too much to carry around. I mean, just look at that, it's not good. And it did make sense for me to approach it like that in the beginning, because I was not sure if I will be using one Mantis blade at a time or something, or for extra redundancy, you know, what have you. But looking at it now, yeah, it's a bit much. <laughs> I'm not too proud to admit mistakes or anything, so I went back to the drawing board and came back with this. I trimmed off as much as I could so everything would fit snugly in a single box. The belt mounted switches was a good idea in theory, but in practice it was quite messy, so instead I went back with a regular toggle switch. To avoid having a lumpy back pocket again, I'll be reusing my Doomfist Waste battery pouch. This way everything will just look cleaner and I can use Mantis blades with costumes that don't have pockets. So with everything ready, it's time to chrome up. Let me tell you right now, it's as fun as it looks. It's super easy to contract and expand them full speed, but for precision control you kinda need to get a feel for it and move your arms with the uh, motors to really sell the effect. I am very happy and relieved that the blades are just as fast going along as well as against gravity and orientation seems to be a non-issue. The fine control though, that was something I didn't expect. I thought that once I add the heavy plexi blades, the motors will shake and overcorrect, but as you see, I am able to articulate the blades fairly well. It's not something they do in the game, it's more for my own sake, I just thought it's really cool. 
the fit is great. Um, it's as if as someone made a perfect model for my body. <laughs> but seriously, um, the stiffness of the plastic helped to distribute the load so it wouldn't feel like your arm is being yanked around, especially when the blades are moving fast. The durability is fine, um, nothing broke so far. And once I got a bit more confident, of course I had to try anime run with them. <laughs> and about the glow, well, I think it turned out pretty good. I wore these to a convention already and man, what an eye catcher. <laughs> Uh, believe it or not, I already have some plans for some upgrades for these. So what's gonna happen next? Well, I guess you'll have to subscribe and see for yourself. But don't share this video to your friends or family or post it on social media. People will just not understand this nerdy relationship you and I have. It's, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. If you like this video, you should check out some of my other stuff too. And if you would like to support me more directly, I just started a Patreon page where you can become a member and get some perks and all that. And uh, yeah, just know that without you guys' attention and input and support, uh, nothing that I do here would be possible. So thank you for that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. <laughs>